It's the summer solstice extravaganza, a festival unlike any other in the world. Join us for five days and five nights in the beautiful Caribbean island of Antigua. Come and full joy the pristine, beautiful beaches. The historical sites on the island tour. Indulge in the experience of the cannabis tour. And of course, the sunrise and the sunset hike to Green Castle Hill. The Stonehenge of the Caribbean amongst the megaliths that align with the stars. Remember that this is an all-inclusive wellness event. To include your plant-based fully vegan meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, transportation and accommodation will be provided for, plus yoga, meditation, and chalice talk with the Honorable Priest Isaac. Plus, meet and greet with family and friends and with the whole Rastafari experience and Tiga team. Join us again from the 19th to the 23rd of June for the Summer Solstice Extravaganza. To reserve your space today, visit our website, priestisaacinstitute.com or email us, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. Prosperity is a herbal remedy that has been naturally designed to nourish the prostate gland. Prosperity uses a combination of leaves, roots, and barks to create a tincture designed to nourish your prostate gland. It also will assist in prostate-related issues such as erectile dysfunction, swollen prostates, and problems related to the passage of urine. Call or WhatsApp 728-8289, 728-8289 and get your bottle today. Prosperity. Yes, royal family, blessed love, give thanks, fire. Yes, I. Wonderful. Give thanks to the Sabbath day, the Sabbath rest. We glorify the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Give thanks for your presence with us, Honorable Priest Isaac, here with you. Of course, looking into a strong of prosperity and growth and success and, and hitting all targets and fulfilling all goals. And of course, we are already here in the office doing mighty works going through making sure everything is in order family i have a little treat for you i want us to really sit in this evening how many of you remember the the beautiful mm, interview i did with the brother highly of the ethiopian orthodox church yes brother highly was with us about mm, two months ago with brother and the jack but this was an interview i did with him like about four or so years ago Many of you may not even remember that, but we're going to be touching upon some of that in preparation for the 25th day of May. Now, we're celebrating the 5th of May right about now. You know, the 5th of May is Ethiopian Liberation Day. So that is now. Yeah, because the sun, the sun has set, at least on my part. It's already the 5th of May in the Eastern world. And give thanks for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, those who are celebrating their resurrection we give thanks we will be having a special event on the 25th day of may hey mark this on your calendar who is the lion of judah of revelation chapter five now i know some of you are gonna be saying i mean come on Ras, we know the answer to that well this is not about knowing the answer to it eh? this will be a scholarly sit down Ras I Adonis, our rabbi, Ras I Adonis, will be sitting with one of the members, I haven't clarified which one yet, of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Now, this is going to be an online event, one of our special webinars. Now, I want you to get this good. Again, family, it's not going to be a debate. Remember, this is the institute. Eh? This is a university here. This is going to be a scholarly exchange. This is not necessarily to fight over who's right and who's wrong. I repeat, it is not a debate. So nobody's going to say, oh, oh, he's wrong and oh, oh, 
I'm going to make him look bad now. No, no, we're not getting into that. If you disagree, at least you come forward. The least he would do is come forward and say, well, I disagree. And let me show you the facts. It's all about, you know, prove it and bring in the source and bring in the information to the forefront. Now, the reality is that those of the Ethiopian Orthodox faith may have a slightly different outlook of who the Lion of Judah of the scripture is. And of course, that would be more than likely the Iasus. They may look at it as the returning Iasus who may not have returned as yet. That would be the Jesus Christ. And of course, Rastafari will highlight that the Lion of Judah, specifically of Revelation chapter 5, is Emperor Haile Selassie. Now, again, we want to keep this scholarly. Let's look at this on a political um, or, or uh, uh, geopolitical level. Now, Haile Selassie, as we know, is the Lion of Judah. Menelik II is the Lion of Judah. Johannes IV is the Lion of Judah. In fact, Emperor Haile Selassie I would have commissioned a specific um, award of which the late Ras Mokenen received one, the Lion of Judah Award, yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Empress Taitu as well, the Lion of Judah Award. And then at the same time, Empress Zaditu was a lioness or a lion of Judah and um, and, and Lijiatsu as well, if I'm not mistaken, would have carried that title. And if he did not receive the title, again, you must keep in mind, one of the things that Rastafari highlight is that Haile Selassie was crowned the lion of Judah, crowned the lion of Judah. So in other words, like Menelik II, lion of Judah, uh, Johannes, Lion of Judah, for whatever reason, the custom may have been like that. They would have taken on that title after they have been cor coronated. Something similar to when the empress becomes the empress then. As you know, the emperor's wife was not coronated with him. Haile Selassie I would have come and changed that. You comprehend. Very good. So, so, so something similar that he was crowned. That's why we consider him the triple crown monarchy. So he wasn't just given one crown in. You know, he was bestowed with these three significant titles of king of kings and lord of lords and the lion of the tribe of Judah. But again, in the book of Revelations, there is a specific call, the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know, uh, uh, um, People were weeping and crying, and the elders have had to say, weep not for behold, it's all right. Someone is coming. Who? The lion of the tribe of Judah, he hath prevailed to open the seals and, and, and to look thereupon and the full works. So the question is, who is he? Johannes the fourth, he's a lion of Judah. Is it him? Menelik the second, he's a lion of Judah. Is it him? or any of the other names that I, I mentioned. And then, of course, some ones would not even be concerned with any kingly lineage. They're going to go into the scripture and say, well, boss, give thanks for them kings. But my Christ of 2,000 years ago, that's my line of Judah. All right. Yeah. Was he bestowed with that title or was he the lamb at that time? I mean, again, eh, let me be clear here personally. The most I will be doing on that day is uh, uh, an observer status I will be playing. In fact, we intend to get a, 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 uh, a balanced moderator for that discussion. So let me give you an idea of how the discussion will be going. So our brother Rasai Adonis from Rasta Roundtable, he will take in about 30 minutes and he will be giving a presentation. He might be doing a PowerPoint presentation and he will be, you know, explaining to the audience with detail and with facts and his evidence why he considers whoever he will choose to be the Lion of Judah. And more than likely, he will be highlighting Haile Selassie. But I don't want to put no words in anybody's mouth you know, and no ideas in anyone's head. But I know there are different ideas out there. For example, an individual, even a Rastafari, I would tell you, well, listen, the Christ of 2,000 years ago, he is the Lion of Judah as well. You know, you know it's just that he didn't fulfill it as yet. 
but in the advent when he returned as the comforter. Haile Selassie I, the full title was given at him. Okay, fair enough. So the question is now, so who is the Lion of Judah? Is it two people, three people, what you're saying? Even though a man come back in a different advent or he reincarnated as someone else, give thanks. But what is his office at his reincarnation? Which reincarnation or incarnation, pardon me, held the office? of the Lion of Judah. I mean, if in the first advent as the Christ or the previous advent, because that's the next thing. And once we tell you a Christ comes in every dispensation. So, so I don't want to add to another person's concept. I don't know what someone is coming uh, um, to, to fully portray. But again, a one would have to, to me, highlight the individual by name that carries the office of the land of Judah as you know, spoken of in the book of Revelations. And I think it's gonna be a very good scholarly reasoning. Many people will learn many things. Let me be clear here, family, because I, as I said, even on that day, I intend to play what they call observer status, not play, because we're not playing around, but we will be observing. And, and of course, we intend to have an audience that will be giving their questions and expecting their answer at the end of the discourse. So after the good brother Rasai Adonis gives his 30 minutes, then the brother from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, he will give his 30 minutes. And then they both will have some time, whether it be 15 or 20 minutes, to, to give an uh, uh, explanation of their analysis of the other person's uh, presentation. In the debate world, they call it a rebuttal. But again, we're refraining from such terms because we want it to be a, a proper sit-down, professor-style, university-style reasoning. And then after that, it will be question answers even from the audience as we go into it. You, 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 you understand. So again, I mean, I'm, I believe that an individual from the orthodox perspective would say, well, listen, man, the, the, the Christ figure, the Jesus Christ or the Iesus Christus, he is the Lion of Judah. It's just that he has not returned in that capacity as yet. Yes, we love the emperor, the emperor, he is our emperor, and he is the Lion of Judah of Ethiopia, and he is the king of kings of our history. But, but you know, he himself will tell you that he, he is not the fulfillment of the, the book of Revelation chapter 5. I would assume that's the angle that an orthodox will take it from. So listen, it's not me steering that ship. I'm just looking for us to have a, a scholarly sit down. You know, this is on the 25th day of May. And listen, family, this is so, <laughs> this, this is going to be so, so, so deep, eh? In the sense of, I know many ones are listening, saying, "Hey, man, we have more important things to talk about," and 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 and, and I've been listening to some of the comments and even some of the ones in the chat, and you know, you got to listen and observe. Even ones have been saying, "Oh, too much talking is time for action." And let me say something here. This is almost just like a quick side. Note. I am in total agreement. When I see people say, oh, too much talking and too much philosophy and not enough action, et cetera, et cetera. I, I'm in total agreement. I, listen, I'm with you 100%. The only thing is, it's impossible for you to be speaking to me. I do agree. Yeah, we, we talk too much. Man, we, we over talk. Not that we don't need to continue to speak it. Because that's how you get your marching orders by, by words. You, you must speak the truth. There's a lot to be said. There's much more to be said that, that, than has been said. So don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with talking. You know, I will continue to talk and speak. And those who have right words should continue to speak. I agree. But yet still, we as a people... We do more talking than action. That is for sure, without a doubt. And a lot of the talking is yapping. See, like we have a chat. That's really what it is. It's just chat. You understand? But but the real essence of us getting to work now. Yeah, we're lacking that. 
So when a person is saying, hey, man, too much talking, not enough action, I agree. The only thing I will tell you straight, be sure it's not me speaking out. No, man, I don't even take lightly to them kind of comments. Yeah, because I'll be asking you, what are you doing? Remember, eh? <laughs> let me be clear here. Hey, remember, as I just said, just two strongs ago, we gave away three laptops, several computer classes, and some other gifts and goodies for our 11th, I repeat, our 11th annual African History Month essay competition. And because this program is not about that, I wouldn't even go no further, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. You see, we have a creed about hungry be fed. Almost every so-called weekend, we, we entertain and feed people, right? Eh? Naked clothes, sick, nourish, and we can go on and on and on. So I'm just telling ones who like to get personal. No offense to no one, but I mean, some of you, I don't even know you. Be careful when you get personal with me, because I don't even have to know who you are. I will, believe me, I will get personal too. Yeah, so just be careful. Have respect for the brother that you see come in front of you. Believe me, eh? I'm not afraid to call people's name and start to go in. So yes, I agree. Too much talk, not enough action, but be clear. And be wise and know that you're not speaking to this brother here. Maybe you're speaking to somebody else. I just want to make that clear. All right. So again, who is the Lion of Judah in Revelation 5? It's the 25th day of May, family, 2024. It's going to be a Saturday evening, 7 p.m. after the Sabbath. As I said, Ras I Adonis has already given us the word. And the brothers from the Orthodox Church, they just, just have to get back to, to me to tell me who will be stepping up. And also, uh, this is very important, that proceeds from this will be going towards the, uh, the pain of the land for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church at St. Mary's of Zion in Antigua. I mean, many of you would have watched when we... We, we um, launched the GoFundMe. Well, not launched it, but when we launched it on our YouTube uh, channel. But the brothers and sisters from the St. Mary's of Zion, as you know, they have a church here in Antigua, just under the shadow of Greek Castle Hill, actually. And they, uh, they are somewhat behind in the payment of the land that they've been trying to acquire. They came on my program and they gave their plead. Uh, they plead the... The link for the GoFundMe, it's still in our description. It has been in our description ever since. Those who desire to, you know, share the love, the love with the ancient Ethiopian Orthodox Church. But again, this is another way that we will be assisting even the church itself, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, this event that we are having. So there is a price for the event. It's an online event. It is only $20 for a beautiful evening with us of knowledge and information and, and vibes. And um, $15 before the 19th of May. So again, that's only $20 and $15 before the 19th of May. And you do, you know what to do. The link for our website is in the description below, priestisaacinstitute.com, priestisaacinstitute.com. Or you can email us, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com and let us know that, hey, I would like to be a part of the audience on that day when you will be doing the um, Who is the Lion of Judah of the Book of Revelation? Wonderful. All right, family. This is what I want to do right now. We're going to revisit the beautiful interview I did with Brother Hailey. Um, he might be the individual, <laughs> the fireman himself, that may be stepping up for that debate or uh, for that round table sitting. I still keep saying debate. I just, for the whole time I've been speaking about it, I just keep saying that, but we're running away from that. We are having a scholarly reasoning and discussion um, not looking for no argument, 
not looking for anything on the negative side. Because we got to learn to be like that, you know? And, and I must say, one of the reasons why I'm pushing that is to literally get us out of this barbaric way of, you know, dealing with knowledge. It's, it's, it's not hard. It's heart-rending, to be honest. Like, even when we gather together uh, as races and people of different ideas and, 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 and sometimes how I see we flare up just because of a little disagreement. And even those in the audience too, you know, acting to be very honest in, in a way where it has to be battle mode, like if this is always, and then, or, and we huffing and puffing. We don't need too much of that. We need to be able to, as conscious people, to, to, to be able to, you know, rational, not rationally have proper discussion, discussions and look at the evidence and no one have to feel as if they have to argue about the truth. So I'm trying my best to encourage that. I don't want us to put away, you know, the, the, the idea that we need to come together and reason differences out. That has to happen. When you're going to stop that, you have to reason amongst yourselves and, and bring out the differences. But you see, what we need to do now is to organize it in a way that individuals have their time to speak. So you don't be back and forth, back and forth. And listen, nothing wrong with a discussion back and forth. And a person says, hey, give me a minute. Let me come in. Or, or okay, let me make a point before you make a point. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's very healthy. But you see, when you need a point to get out with clarity, give me half an hour. Then you take half an hour. Then I take 15 minutes to assess what you would have said, you know? And, 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 and that's really officially, to be honest, that's a debate, you know? There's nothing really wrong with the term debate neither, you know? It's not as if it's a bad thing. But we would have taken debate now to be SummerSlam, to be WrestleMania, you know? So, so, so... In the same way people take words and, and it means something else. Yesterday you could be gay, meaning that you are happy. You would never tell nobody you're gay today. I surely won't. You understand? Just because that they would have literally taken over the word. Look at the word propaganda. I was in a meeting once and I was saying that, hey, we need to set up a proper propaganda machinery. I mean, the meeting almost came to an end. <laughs> there were people in the audience saying, no, man, bonfire and propaganda. I was saying, no, but hold on. Marcus Garvey used the word propaganda. It's just that propaganda as a word now has, has become what it is. And the same thing with debate. Debate has this knuckle up kind of thing. So we're trying to get away from that. So in preparation for the 25th day of May, let's listen to some of this put to the forefront but i personally find it hard to believe that as a seasoned uh, uh, faithful in this tradition especially the orthodox tradition i find it hard to believe that a person that is well studied at least genuine cannot see some level of divinity in Haile Selassie you may not say Christ you, whatever you may say, you know, Rasta will say the Almighty God. A person may say, Man, you've gone too far now. Like, but whatever it is, you could obviously see, like, for example, the Orthodox Church was speaking about making him a saint. You know, Rasta Bon Fire and that too. You know, Rasta said, You're a saint, you know, as a king, you know, example. But what I see now, being a balanced person, I think, I see that, okay, that is to me showing some evidence that at least. The hierarchy of this church can see, hey, there's some spark of divinity in this man, you know. There's something more than meets the eye. And I honestly believe, outside of Rastafari doctrine, I think it's obvious that that human being, there was something divinely special about him. And Rastafari, I know, as a movement, may have been the group that has put it together and, you know, put the puzzle and the pieces together to bring it to exactly what it is. Um, I would like to hear your opinion on that. It could be a personal opinion or uh, from the church in general. Well, uh, um, okay. We, in our time, use these same statements. Mm. Ethiopia shall stretch forward. And all of that, and, you know, yeah, right, right. But 
when we were seeing it as his majesty, King David was seeing it as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah? The meaning of Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God is when the three kings came to visit him bearing gifts of gold as his kingship, Frankenstein as his priestly character, and more as for his death and resurrection. So when we say now Ethiopia shall stretch forth their hands, everybody have their own interpretation. But for the Ethiopians, that is when Ethiopia stretched forth their hands unto God when they came <coughs> to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah? So when we uh, say these things, there is biblical evidence. Psalm 71 said that. But we do um we do we didn't have this history. Psalm uh, 71 key. Ethiopia shall bow before him. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. That's Psalm 72. That is Psalm 71, 72. Well, you know, yeah. that is what it is. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. And we, in our history, in Ethiopian history, the evidence is there that the three kings was Kasata, Melko, and Bazara. These are the names of the three kings that came to visit our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So our Ethiopian fathers identified this aspect of that visitation is when Ethiopia stretched for that. It took them two years to travel from Ethiopia to come to uh, mm -hmm. Bethlehem to bury the gifts. The important thing is, in our history, yeah, we, we say, uh, how you following star now? Eh? If uh, we follow star, everybody could see the star. Eh? When Herod wanted to, to kill our yeah. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, eh? they would have find they would have known. But they, 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 their heart was clouded. You see, they had bad intentions. You know, the star had to actually when they were following the star, it had gradually showing them exactly where our Lord was, and descended on the spot, you know, so that they could have gone to him. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That is our history. Yeah? Then we say, we talk, uh, we talk about the, the first Adam. Yeah? The first Adam was formed by God's hands. Adam is really important to us, you know, because Personally, he was created by the hands of God. So that is why we say, first Adam. But without a woman involved in his creation. Yeah. Not like uh, we born mother and father. And, uh, he was made by the hands of God. The reverse of one, the second Adam. This time now, born, that is why we celebrate now the 7th of January, what we call incarnation, incarnated Christ, born with all the seed of man. So as in the beginning, uh, woman uh, came out of man, in the second Adam now, he came out of woman. And that is the definition of orthodoxy. Because what he offering us now, uh, salvation, Psalm, um, St. John chapter 7. Right. If you don't eat of like, my flesh. I like that science. Yeah. Eh? If you don't eat of my flesh. This is St. John, the book of St. John chapter 7. If you don't eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. So we have to understand why the concept of the bread and wine came about. Eh? We have to understand that. Yeah. If you understand these things, we will know the acceptance of Christianity start with that acceptance. So so, so the, the church fathers now, showing us from ever since God has been revealing unto us his presence on earth, you know, the burning bush. They compare the burning bush where the fire of the Godhead did not consume the bush. They were showing us now the same concept of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The 
There was all this in the act. Can explain that part to me. Don't go to the act. They burned the bush and burned the mirror. Let me hear that. Well, what she had in her. God is fire. Okay, all right. Yeah, she yeah. is. Let's ask her. Yeah, she is. You know, and the, and, and, the, and the Protestants ask all kind of questions. Well, uh, if she is God, where was the curtain? Where was the throne king? Oh, no. Uh, we're not being realistic uh, mm -hmm. in the mysteries of God, you know? And then the Ark of the Covenant. All this. Yeah, okay, you're saying that. Okay. All of this now is to bring man closer to him. So the, the Ark of the Covenant now, that holds what? The word of God in it from Moses' time. Who is the word of God? That word that was made flesh and dwell among us. Let me ask you quickly, as our time is going there. Oh, um, so, so, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> the, 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 Next what, time. When we used to hear about Christ was born in a cave in Ethiopia, what, 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 what um, in, you could put it at as a well studied person visited the land and, you know, in the church itself? Micah. The book of Micah. And even us as Ras, we don't just say things loosely. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be clear. The, book, be clear. the book of Micah. Chapter 5 of verse 1. Mm -hmm. uh, when Micah, the prophet, come to Jerusalem at the time, Bethlehem was the worst, uh, was the worst of all the nations surrounding Jerusalem. She was, she went down to the lowest. The smallest among them. Not small, not honest. Uh, no, 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 no movement, no prosperity, okay. nothing. Micah chapter 5 verse 1 explain because of him Bethlehem before all of that transpires was transformed now to become now the biggest of the cities in Jerusalem in preparation now for our Lord and Savior being born in Bethlehem all the prophecy Micah 5 1 Micah 5 1 you see we don't have time you know, so one day, one of these days when we have time, don't mind the YouTube or not. No, I when we have time yes. to sit down and go through it in detail, just as how the fathers teach me. I'm not teaching you, right? but I'm just showing you what I learned there. You know? wrong with it, <laughs> yeah, I'm just showing you what I learned, you know. Right. Yeah, so I know uh, it, they, it's so intricate mm -hmm. with them. You see, this is what they have preserved, you know. I mean. This is what they present. You know how much times they try to uh, conquer Ethiopia? But because the Ethiopians, i.e. not as the children of Ethiopia unto me, O children of Israel. And, but you see, one of the reasons Ethiopia was always before Israel. And if we understand, you see, sometimes we can't say uh, everything because if, if, if we can't make a proper analogy and we're just making statements, you know, we're, we're making confusion. And we don't, that is not what we set out to do, you understand? But uh, our history is, when Solomon, when Solomon made the Queen of Sheba, Solomon was just a uh, second up to it. Because if you're, if you're checking Saul, Saul was not the Judah, Judaic lineage. Saul was uh, Benjamin, right? Mm -hmm. And then David, yeah. and then Saul. So it's second, second, in, in second, yeah. second ruler along the line of Judah. But along the line of kings of Judah, he was the third. third you understand what I'm saying? Yes. OK. So Queen of Sheba yeah. was the 52nd ruling monarch of Ethiopia. Thank you. Of course. Huh? No respect to that. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. And then, you know. Uh, but when I asked of that too, um, I received an email from someone from Ethiopia, and they they, they refer to their father as he's either a deacon or uh, some member of the clergy or a monk. And uh, because of a previous program I did, speaking of the city in Ethiopia, Adama, that was the name of of Adam, and Haile Selassie changing the name to Nazareth. I remember doing a program on that. Because uh, I have a book, I don't think you ever came across the book, it's entitled The True Biblical Land of Israel. And it, just in a detail, I, in, a, in a nutshell, I basically make a comparison with the land of Africa and uh, the biblical Israel. And one of the things that stand out, for example, you know the river Gion that the Bible speaks of is the Nile, for example. Okay, right. I didn't even know you had that there. In Genesis chapter, right, you have it there, the, the river that encompasses Ethiopia. But in Second Chronicles 22, um, Second Chronicles 33, uh, verse 14, a mention is made of the city of David being on the west of the Gion. 
that is I can um, I can almost repeat it verbatim for you. Where he speaks of King Manasseh, mm -hmm. and he said, "This king built a wall around the city of David on the west of the Gia." Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you could just read that and do you really sit and stop. But the west, of, if the Nile is the Gia, the city of David would be to the west of the Nile. Now mm -hmm. it sounds off; it really does. But then now. Uh, that's why I would ask you, well, when the Ethiopians say that Christ was born in a cave, in, what's the, the no, that's no, why I'm asking for, even if you may disagree, mm -hmm. what's the reality of that? Is it just a rumor, Rastas does be saying, can I hear Ethiopians no, say so too? Okay. Okay. with Michael, okay. with the prophecy right. of Bethlehem okay. and all that. Right. So it is his story that uh, it is, was in Bethlehem. Right. Yeah? But no, no but, but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Good night, brother. Yes, Christ was born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. I would agree. But is Bethlehem, if we're using biblical description, mm -hmm. is Bethlehem mm -hmm. where we have Bethlehem today? In if, Jerusalem. If that is yes, saying it's Jerusalem. on, yeah. that book is saying it's on the west of the Gion. Yes, it's Jerusalem. And, uh, but the Gion is the Nile. You see, we see when, when we talk uh, uh, what is the expansion of uh, the Ethiopians, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we have the map, yeah? Uh, yeah, you gave me, exactly, you gave me a nice map. Yeah, I, I yeah. even showed it on the, uh, yeah. the old map of Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, the, the land of the dark-skinned people and this land of Ethiopia included, yeah, yeah it included the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula and all biblical lands. Here you go. Yeah. I'm not saying nothing what they done. He said, he said, uh, Ethiopia uh, is that land, the whole land of Ethiopia. You have the drawing, eh? Yeah, you gave uh, me a and, nice and, and, and they're showing you now, yes. modern day, you know, they're showing you uh, what, the Atlantic Sea or the Mediterranean Sea? Yeah, someone had it, they, they, someone had it, you know? Mm -hmm. But it was originally Ethiopia. the Ethiopian Sea, yeah, Ethiopia. which compassed the whole land. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then we're looking exactly. at them, they, take it, they want to take everything out of Ethiopia and carry it somewhere else. You know, it comes down, all right, right now, what about uh, the original, where the, where the, uh, yes. Is just, it? just to show the audience, yeah. this is a map, this was presented yeah. to me yeah. by you, eh? Yeah, Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopian ocean. Yeah, Ethiopian ocean. That is what we, bring up the writing, mm. bring up the writing. Oh, yeah, what they call, what they call this, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, Atlantic. Now, modern day Atlantic yes, Ocean, yes, yes, yes. was the Ethiopian Ocean. So the whole landmass was once known as Ethiopia, not um, Africa. The elders say, uh, the, the, one of the elders who wrote this, Africa as a country. I actually can't even remember if I, I went back to this to, as it says here, just to read it for you. Um, the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic. Now, modern whole map from about 1665, showing all of Africa being called Ethiopia. And the Atlantic Ocean was the Ethiopian Ocean. And this says, I don't know the original. It was here, this boy. Two, oh, that's 20, 2000, $250 15 years ago. All right. And uh, Brother Hailey was the one that presented me this very map. I still have it. Okay. And the Atlantic yes, Ocean yes, yes, yes. was the Ethiopian Ocean. Mm -hmm. So the whole landmass was once known as Ethiopia, mm -hmm. not um, Africa. The elders say, um, they, they, one of the elders who wrote this, Africa as a continent only came into being as a result of a yeah, name change. change in the late 16th century, about 500 years ago. It follows that there's no mention of Africa within the Holy Scriptures. It was always Ethiopia. Oh, but it is convenient. Oh. Yeah, Ethiopia, Egypt. They said Ethiopia, Egypt. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. It is convenient for them to change it because they, what they do, they check on board and they divide and they, among themselves. It was convenient for them to do that. But that area that remain independent, our independence is be is based on our faith. faith. Yeah, okay. That's if the, our people return, yeah, if my people return to me, I will return to my people. You see, we're making big fuss about uh, the unification of Africa and its development, material development. We're not making our responsibility as the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is to give our people all the spiritual 
unification. Can you hear anything, Ms. Majesty? Africa is yeah, our nation's like words. Yeah. And is in spiritual and physical bondage. bondage yeah. Because their leaders are turning to outside forces for solution to African problem. Whenever African, whatever African needs is within hand. Yeah. Yeah. When the African righteous people come together, the world will come together. This is our divine destiny. It's a responsibility. Yes, yes. So we could go after the material things okay. and then end up like, cast yourself down and I'll give you a kingdom. And next thing you know, we fall apart again. Mm -hmm. But the foundation has to be built upon the rock. This is my rock. And if it's built on that rock, then everything then will go out of that. Be before we close, you know, um, a lot of ones, I think you might be the right person, a lot of ones um, have a lot of concern with the the imagery that is portrayed, um, especially in places like Lalibella, of the Christ figure. You know, see like how you say in Jesus and the, you know how Rasta. If I if I say Hulum Belfetaria and Lam Lam, you will understand. I know. I would understand. So, 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 so we have to use terms here for our brothers okay. to understand. But as you yes, develop, yes, yes. we will know Jesus Christ is Jesus Christos. You could say Xavier, you could say Amla, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But outside of the name, mm -hmm. a lot of ones are concerned. People ask me, I mean, I, I can't really give them the answer, of a lot of the European looking figures. Mm -hmm. And to my, in my own humility, mm -hmm. and this is just my humble thought, mm -hmm. Uh, is that these are more the Syrian look. Because when I look at the Syrian Orthodox churches, they usually have depiction of the Christ looking just like how they look in Ethiopia. Yeah, actually, the Syrian depiction whiter than the European. Oh, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I, I, I know I was showing that, but uh, that's obviously the African rendition. In fact, I will believe that artwork was done by... Um, Brother Jacques himself, as you would have remembered, he expressed that a lot of the Ethiopian artwork that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church uses right now in this region is actually done by him. So, so, so to me, actually, that was beautiful artwork, really. So don't get me confused with what I'm saying. I, maybe I just didn't have a picture to show the, the, the European-looking artwork that you see a lot in Ethiopia now that I was speaking about. But anyway, so those who are just coming in, this is an interview I did like about four or five years ago uh, with Brother brother uh, Hailey, and we were speaking about, well, many different things. In fact, we are also highlighting right now at this moment, Royal Family, the 25th of May. For those who are just coming in, let me give you a reminder here, the 25th of May, get yourself together no worry this is just the first you're going to be hearing about this i mean <laughs> i'm going to be having brother ras adonis in a few days he's going to be giving us an idea of what to expect when we sit down for that heavy reasoning i intend to have the brothers from the ethiopian orthodox church brother highly more than likely brother jacques and whoever else will be sitting down and they will be clearly telling us who the line of judah is and, um, you know, I intend to basically maybe have a, a sit down with them together, even before we actually go into the the halls of the university to have that special, special sit down, you know, in the Tigers Temple. It's going to be a Tigers Temple special. So for those who have been asking about the Tigers Temple, the Tigers Temple return. And remember, um, a specific percentage of that proceeds will be going towards the Ethiopian Orthodox Church as it relates to their land at St. Mary's of Zion, the purchasing of their land. And remember, the link for their, um, their not cash app, what do you call that stuff there? The GoFundMe. It's in the description below. The link for the Go GoFundMe is in the description below for the Ethiopian Orthodox Church um, as it relates to the land uh, here in Antigua that is in an area known as Bendels. For those of you who remember the story, for those who don't, 
again, this is where the, the Orthodox Church would have established their home, nice building that they have where they worship. Of course, they're celebrating their Easter at this moment, and uh, they do still have somewhat to pay on their land, and any assistance they can receive, they would be very thankful for. So we'll be taking somewhat of this proceeds to go towards the land uh, at the Ethiopian Orthodox headquarters. So again, it will be who is the Lion of Judah in Revelation 5. Again, that will be the 25th of May, 7 p.m. The tickets are only $20, um, dollars, uh, 15 before the 19th of May. So if you order your tickets now or you, you preserve or reserve your spot now, yeah, you get it for only 15 and you can email us priest Isaacs Institute at gmail.com priest Isaacs Institute at gmail.com or uh, to get more information of course PayPal cash app and some other means and ways are available and then you could visit our website in general all the links are in the description below priest Isaacs Institute.com all right family share the link how many of you have shared the link? Share the link. Let someone else know what's going on. We're having a beautiful evening. Share the link. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and give the video some of them likes and the thumbs up business. Yeah. All right. Let's continue. Where were we? Oh, before we continue. So how many of you have ordered your prosperity? Family, <laughs> let me tell you, it's no, I know we understand the seriousness when it comes to prostatic health. And I think most of us, at least, you know, uh, know someone or have heard of someone as it relates to pros uh, 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 prostate cancer, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a joke. And even just dealing with the prosperity, obviously, I would have come across many people that have literally have been suffering for some time now with their prostate, when it's inflamed, when it's swollen. And, and, and even the lack of proper erection. And of course, as I said before, the prosperity is doing marvelous works. They say, no praise to me. I'm telling you, give thanks to the people at Mount Kailash Rejuvenation Center. Of course, you know, Priest Kailash himself, the right honorable master physician, without a doubt. Um, and, and the prosperity is just one of the many mighty products that the God would have produced. And I'm telling you, give thanks for the prosperity. So for those of you who are serious about your health and sisters, trust me, sisters, you ain't, you don't have to wait on him. Believe me, the prosperity is a lifesaver. This ain't no surgery. This ain't doctor this and doctor that. Take it from me. The prosperity is a lifesaver. And you and those of you who would have listened to radio and you would have heard the testimonies. Lifesaver. All right. If that prosperity is a herbal remedy that has been naturally designed to nourish the prostate gland. Prosperity uses a combination of leaves, roots, and barks to create a tincture designed to nourish your prostate gland. It also will assist in prostate-related issues such as erectile dysfunction, swollen prostates, and problems related to the passage of urine. Call or WhatsApp 728-8289, 728-8289, and get your bottle today. Prosperity. And of course, remember, Royal Family, you know, those of you in the international community, you can definitely just visit the website. Uh, I think, you know, that that's really, it's going to still come back to that. Just visit the website and make it much easier. Uh, PriestIsaacInstitute.com. That's PriestIsaacInstitute.com. Or you can email us, PriestIsaacInstitute at gmail.com. Or whatever means and ways you want to do the, con the contact. It's all right. We'll definitely reply and get you your prosperity. All right. Family. I mean that family. Our youths, our young ones, our children, we need them, redeem them, and clean them. You see them or else the enemy will come and scheme them. Family. I mean that. Family, 
Education for the nation that's full of salvation, biology, astronomy, and African theology, geography, family. I love that family. Whatever the age or the stage that youth will be engaged with tutorials, activities, and videos from the studios of the Priest Isaac Institute of Holistic Knowledge, family. The International Homeschool Program is designed and recommended for all ages. The psychological state of our children is very important, especially in the environment that most of us live in. The International Homeschool Program provides online classes, activities, and videos that are fun for the youth and edifies them of their African heritage as well as the higher sciences. To enroll your family today, visit www.priestisaacinstitute.com, go to the main website, and search for Youth Corner. Or you can email priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com for a course sample. Thank you, thanks. The Syrian look, when I look at the Syrian Orthodox churches, they usually have depiction of the Christ looking just like how they look in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. um, you actually can see the difference between the Syrian art and the European art. But yet still, even in Ethiopia, you have some of the, the European Michelangelo, Caesar Borgia looking Jesus figures. Um, and when I look at the old art from the monks, the Waldeber monks and these ones, I don't see nothing <clears throat> like that. So is that some of the crept in Yes. Um, okay. Um, uh, 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 let me please pardon me for the video work. Uh, I think I was using uh, some sort of tablet. It may have been an iPad. So just pardon me there. I know it's a th this this interview happened so uh, impromptuously or impromptu. So just forgive me there. I see my the head part is cut off. And part, so please forgive me. Uh, indoctrination, uh, really and truly. Uh, oh man, and even part of the garments, I see my color sticking out. <laughs> yeah, but give thanks, brother Hailey. This uh, this interview was uh, uh, done at brother top ranking here in Antigua. All right. Marka uh, say we as Africans have found a new ID, wise our God has no color. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yet it is only human, only human to see right. things through yeah. our own spectacle. So you. are you all right? Yes, I can't explain you not to, for wanting to see. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I like but the history, mm -hmm. when we follow the history, we know then that David, great, great grandmother, is an Ethiopian. Yes. His grandmother was an Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. His mother was an Ethiopian. Moses married you. The whole history, you know. The whole history. So what we we must not uh, be sidetracked mm -hmm. from the reality of what it is. Okay, the tourism industry is something then that is fastly growing all over the world. And uh, and uh, the, the, the different nations come to Ethiopia and they visit the sites, mm -hmm. bearing these okay. things. Okay. It's only, okay, all right, and they put it there. Okay. Now we take that now and, mm -hmm. and, and spread it now like if, you know, Ethiopians worshiping a white god or whatever it is there. But over the years, they know for centuries, mm -hmm. the history is not a, it's not a color race we fight in, you know. The mm -hmm. history proves to us yes. that the, the majority of the historical facts, everything mm -hmm. is Ethiopia. I had a sister that just went to Ethiopia and she actually said, at Lalibela, the priest actually told her that, that we only put these out for the tourists, and when they're gone, we put them back. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, but, but as a person that <laughs> is into that to a degree. Because I, I, as, I, mm. as you said, then I rightly, I went, you know, I, I didn't see anything like that. Okay, well, I mean, I, just I didn't see, I, 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 I leave, I leave Addis, I went to Bahadar, from Bahadar, I went to Gondar, yes, uh, yeah? 
from Gondar. I spent time in Gondar, five or six days in Gondar. From that, no, we, 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 we have treasures then, but we, you know, they will never tell us the truth. Next time we go and link me up there. Eh? Then from Gondar, we go to Aksum, from Aksum to Lalibela, from Alilela, back to Addis Ababa. I, 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 I've been there. So I, I talk with a certain amount of conviction. Of course. You know, so, so, so why it is then yeah, that um, we, we, you know, yeah. one of the things we have to really take to heart is the ways and means the system penetrates us. And the most important way and means they use, because we don't have our own radio stations, we don't have our own television stations or media system, is, is low, you know, with propaganda. So we have to continue doing what you're doing here and give the proper information. No, we're not forcing, the, forcing anybody to accept the, the teachings how our fathers teach us, you know. But at the end of the day, when you help me disseminate this information that I am giving you here now, they can't say that they don't know. That is the difficult part of it. Mm -hmm. They can't say that they don't know or they don't have an idea then to make a difference now, to see things either left or right. You have you could make a decision. You know, yeah, yeah, you get, could, you get, get all information. The and we have a lot of information. I too was you know, trust me. Yeah, no, I, 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 I I don't shame, you know what I mean? I don't shame and I am not shame of my love for his imperial majesty, you know, because I if do, I did not know his imperial majesty, I would have never got to know the church. And if I didn't know the church then you know you know, and this is why I asked of His Majesty, you know, I, I didn't want to ask it as if it's it, you're trying to uh, play down what the Rasta is saying. No. Even without Rastafari, no. I think the within world, the Orthodox Church, the there should world. be some, your hand should be on your chin like, the world, oh, this, this man was born, oh, this, this man was born and what we thought. Right, this is what I mean, it's obvious. You, know. you see, in 19... And something divine. Let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. In 19... 65, after the, the churches and them was, yeah, yeah, was yeah, separated, yeah. Mm -hmm. in 1965, ah, uh, you have the history, Isaac, you have plenty work to do, you know, you have the history, you understand? After 1500 years, His Majesty called the five Orthodox churches to Addis Ababa, first time after 1500 years. It's they who, because of that particular work, bestow that title upon him, you know, defender of the faith and of, of, of Orthodox Christianity. You know. So we have everything going for us. Uh, it's up to us then to make decisions, not uh, not uh, by force, because nothing by force, but by free will. Yeah, we have a uh, choice. God make man different to all his creatures. Yes, yes. To the extent now that man now has gone beyond his choices now. We don't want to discuss that on the YouTube. Yeah, but you see what happening in you see what's happening in the world. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. That is to the extent, you know. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. eh? Before we close, a lot of these churches, these these churches then that profit from Christianity. You know what is their real objection? When they do these ill works, you know what they will do? They will turn the hearts of the people, Satan doing that. He wants to turn the hearts of the people away from God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the rate the church is going at, the people will say for themselves, if that is Christianity, I don't want no part of Christianity. That is the objective. Right, yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a technical fight against the one holy, universal apostolic church that was formed by Christ. Technically, that is what they do. And in a nutshell, the way, the history you gave is not, although it's the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, but you're saying the church is the church. Yeah. The church that was formed by Christ. It's branded so now because we preserved it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get yeah. But but listen, mm -hmm. listen, because you know. Uh, I write there, eh? because mm -hmm. when I write, it helps me to remember. Yeah? Of the nation still celebrating the 7th of January, 16, you know, when I say 15, because you know I always call Ethiopia. 
Serbia. You say it, say it. You say it. Belarus. Belarus eh? Montenegro. You could pronounce Russia. better. Eh? Kagas, Kagas, uh, that one is beat me, I believe. Yeah. Kazakhstan, Kagas, yeah, Kaza, yeah, yeah. Katan, yeah. Eh? Macedonia, eh? Ethiopia, uh -huh. Egypt, uh -huh. Israel, Georgia, Georgia eh? Moldova, eh? Bulgaria, eh? Romania, Ukraine, and Greece. Still celebrating. Um, just Jan. quickly, um, some of them celebrated on the sixth, don't they? Well, I've come across we, that. We, we, I think it's just we, a day, you know, yeah. but no, 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 science no. Really. We went, we went. To, when mm. I leave here, mm. what you will know, what you what. I live on the night of the six, what you would normally call on the night oh, of the six. Okay, I get you. I get you understand? You. I get but you. really and truly, the, if, 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 if the science is simple. Yeah, it was yeah. darkness and then light. Yeah. So when you all say yeah. in the West, when we, sorry, 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 that, I, know, not, that I didn't felt no stone there, but I sl just slip out. Mm -hmm. When we say, we say, eh? mm -hmm. night yeah, and then day. The, so it. what today is? Yeah. We, where we are now? Today is, is sun, Sunday? So called Sunday night. All right. This is Monday night. No, this is Monday. Monday night yeah, yeah. and tomorrow is Monday, Monday. and Monday finish. Yeah. Of course, you know, we speak of that and, you know, the, the, uh, the night, the, the evening coming before the morning. But, you know, still, I give thanks, Brother Hailey, man, even when Brother Hailey explained, I mean, reality, man, there's a lot of work to be done. Of works. And... He also made mention of us having our own media, radio station. A lot. That, that is why, you know, I mean, they say Moses was the meekest man upon the planet, brother. Yeah, even again, when Miriam and, and Aaron passed the place. But still, the Most High had to ask them, were they not afraid? They speak against the Lord's anointed. Yeah. So what I'm saying again, for those who may be just stepping in, this is going to be a beautiful scholarly sit down. I expect nothing less. It will be Ras I Adonis of the Lion of Judah Society. I'm talking about the ancient Rastafari Sabbatica. And the the representative of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, it could be my good brother, Brother Aili, or it could be more than likely I'm the Jack, or maybe someone else. Uh, as I said, it's 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 really styled as a, a professor-like scholarly exchange, where each individual will get at least we decided on between 25 to 30 minutes to make somewhat of a presentation on who they see, the line of Judah specifically of Revelation chapter 5, to be in detail, you know, as the, a physical expression of a person, whether he, he is to come or he is here right now or he came and gone already, whatever, you know, we're not putting anything in anyone's mouth or in their mind. And of course, you know, as I said, this will be on the 25th day of May, uh, that is African Liberation Day. As Brother Aili just said a moment ago, the evening comes before the morning. So right now it is already the 5th of May, Ethiopian Liberation Day. I mean, hey, well, this is a day to celebrate. Go and watch some master of ceremonies, man. And that's the vibe from the 5th of May to the 5th of May. And of course, as I said, the 25th of May, it is a Saturday evening. It will be 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. And the admission to this is only $20. You understand? And again, if you are to purchase your, your ticket before, it is only $15. And you can visit our website or you can send us an email. All the link is in links, links, links are in the description below this video. Even the link to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church GoFundMe, E-C-T-O, I think it is. Ethiopian Orthodox Church, E-O-T-C. <laughs> yeah, GoFundMe. But just look at the link description below, or you can just Google Ethiopian Orthodox Church, um, uh, uh, GoFundMe, Antigua, St. Mary, and it will appear. And again, this will be on the, the 25th of May. So our website is priestisaacinstitute.com. 
And our email is priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. Looking forward in a few evenings from now, I intend to have a sit down with King Ras I Adonis as we get into the discussion and get it heated up and get the mind prepared and, and let you understand the importance of such a scholarly exchange. Yeah, in this time of information, inspiration, and action. Give thanks. Life given the keeper of life. Hey, listen, man, if you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. And of course, you know, it takes some real eyes to realize the real lies that are amongst us. Life given the keeper of life. Slasia Ja Rastafari. The Tiger's Nest is a Radio Anu International exclusive program brought to you by the Honorable Priest Isaac. The Tiger's Nest is aired live every Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. local standard time. Become a subscriber through our website by visiting www.priestisaacinstitute.com and choose between our subscription plans. Or you can subscribe by using the details provided in the link below.